In this video I'm going to expand the discussion from noise and signal in a single pixel to noise and signal from an array of pixels. I'm going to consider the simplest possible array of pixels, a 2x2 two two array. I guess the simplest would be a 1x2, but I want it to be a 2x2. Two two. So let's draw the pixels. Here's pixel 1, and then pixel 2, or that's another pixel would be below it. We have another column of pixels here. So let's say this is pixel 1, pixel 2, pixel 3, pixel 4. And this would be, just to get our terminology straight, column 1, column 2, uh, row 1, and row 2. And every single pixel in this array is going to have that 4T arrangement from the 4 transistor arrangement from the previous video. So it has a photodiode, a transfer gate coming out to a reset gate, an integration capacitor coming out to a source follower, the resistor of the source follower, and this is where that row select becomes important. So there's the row select transistor. And then that comes out to a column bus, which comes down to a multiplexer. And then an ADC. Now let me draw out, I'm not going to draw out the entire pixel arrangement, but there's the column select, which comes out and touches the same bus, this pixel over here. We'll have another uh, row select, rather, sorry, which comes out and touches a bus. There's that. The bus comes down, and that may feed into the same multiplexer. You have the multiplexer there, so you can read this row, and then read this row, and then so on. Now, where does the row select come in? Well, the row select is here, comes on over and then it touches here. So here and here. So if you were to turn on that row select and turn the other ones off, you would get this the value the the the, the voltages from this pixel spilling out there, the voltage from this pixel spilling out here, the voltage from this pixel would be stopped. It wouldn't this transistor is off. It wouldn't come out the tra the one from this transistor is off that that wouldn't come out and so you're just reading that top row. Now, what are the sources of noise that come about because we have an array? Uh, the primary sources of noise come about because the pixels have different characteristics. Does pixel, do the transistor, for instance, do the pixels in transistor 1 and transistor 2 have exactly the same characteristics? Well, of course they don't. There may be slight differences in the size of the transistors, which results in different gain. There may be slightly different different slight differences in passivation or energy traps in the semiconductor material which would lead to different dark current. There might be slight differences in the electrostatics of the pixel which lead to slightly different accumulations of, uh, of, uh, of, of photo current. Uh, it doesn't matter. I mean th those are some of the broad ways in which they arise uh, but there are distinct three distinct categories in which we can describe how the pixels are different from one another. And I'm going to scroll down and list that. The three noise sources in an array are one, fixed pattern noise, fixed pattern noise, usually abbreviated as FPN, and this is primarily due to transistor mismatch. Transistor mismatch. They don't have exactly the same size and M-A-T-E-C-H. They don't have exactly the same size and so they have slightly different responses to whatever their conditions are. The second uh, category of noise sources, noise sources in FPA, uh, sources in an array, I said FPA, focal plane array, focal plane array. The second one is photoresponse non-uniformity, big word. Photo response non uniformity or abbreviated as PRNU. 
And this is the differences in response to light that each pixel will have. Maybe one pixel for a given integration time generates two electrons, and another pixel generates three, and another one generates one. Uh, it, those, those numbers are very small. It's, it's much, much larger than that, but that gives you the idea. And the third category is just the re, it's the dark current version of photoresponse un, non-uniformity. It's Carl, usually called dark signal non-uniformity. non-uniformity. And that's D, S, N, U. And that's uh, just uh, different pixels will have different dark currents uh, for a given integration time. Uh, the, the sources of dark current are surface dark current and bulk dark current. Uh, you don't need to know that, just know that some pixels have different responses than others. These are the noise sources that only apply to arrays of pixels. They do not, none of, none of these three apply to a single pixel. If you're talking about a single pixel, uh, you have to refer to the previous video. Uh, they describe differences between pixels and they just don't have any meaning at all for a single pixel. And in practice, also, not everybody has a consistent terminology for these three things and sometimes they mix them up. Uh, they say one thing when they mean another, and you should just keep that in mind and be flexible with how you deal with the definitions in the future, but uh, try to keep these three firmly in mind. Now I'm going to write out the samples that we get from a correlated double sampling operation. You can refer back to the previous video if you want to, to get more details. Uh, sample 1, the reset operation, is going to be Q reset plus Q1 read. That's what we had from the previous video. And now there's this new term, QFPN. And remember, I'm talking about these in terms of input referred electrons. Uh, QFPN would be just the differences in the transistor sizes leading to the signals that spill out on the column bus. Sample 2 would be equal to the photocurrent plus the dark current times T int. This is from the previous video plus the shot noise. I'm going to write it as total shot noise. That's from the previous video. Plus, uh, what do I got here? Q reset. That's from the previous video as well. Q2 read, also from the previous video. And now I have the new noise sources. Q FPN plus, I ran out of room, so I'm going to go like this. Q uh, PRNU, the, the photoresponse non-uniformity, plus Q dark signal non-uniformity. And what do we get when we perform the correlated double sampling? Let me scroll down. S2 minus S1 equals the photocurrent plus dark current times T int plus Q shot total Remember, that's a physical limit, the shot noise limit, plus Q reset minus Q reset. And it's our KTC noise that's going to go to zero. Let me start here on the next line. Plus Q2 read minus Q1 read. Remember, those are uncorrelated, so that's actually a term that will double. Plus Q... FPN minus Q FPN to the first order you can assume that these are the same so they're going to go to zero that's not always true but it's pretty true plus Q dark signal non-uniformity plus Q P R N U the noise and uh, the signal and noise associated with these terms now at this point uh, we have eliminated KTC noise. We've dramatically reduced fi fixed pattern noise, uh, if not eliminated it, and so you would think we're pretty good. And for the most practical purposes, this is good enough, uh, especially for things that would result in a human looking at a picture at the end of the day. But at this point, we could also, if we wanted to improve our performance, do a two-point correction. And I'll just briefly talk about it. I'm not going to go into it in much detail. In a two-point correction, is uh, gain. The first point is, well, offset, and the second point is gain. 
And what you would do here is you would say blank off your detector and take a bunch of dark images. A bunch of bunch, like 25. That's a, good, that's a pretty good number. 25 dark images. And then stack them all together. And then you take, uh, you illuminate with some illumination that would give you about half of your full well, half of a, your maximum signal from the sensor, and stack those together. Um, and if you averaged all of these offset images together and subtracted them from future images, you would have an offset correction. And if you stacked, this this is going to get a little cumbersome, uh, uh, you stack these images together, average them together, um, subtract the offset images from these, and then take a region of interest or your entire array and divide it by this value, you'll have a, you'll have a scalar factor that you can apply to all pixels going forward that essentially normalizes their gain to one, uh, or normalizes their gain to the same thing. Uh, hopefully that wasn't too confusing and I may make another video about that later.